live from our Kwacha studios in Blanta. We bring you MBC News with me, Kings Lemtila, and my sign language interpreter, Isleen Lemponda, our top stories. Vice President Dr. Michael Osi has challenged government departments to be transparent to avoid speculations. Defectors from the opposition DPP pledge their support to President Dr. Lazla Sequela. And government launches a 1 billion kwacha NGO fund with a call for non government organizations to use the funds for its intended purpose. Good evening and thank you for joining us and now to our top story. Vice President Dr. Michael Osi has challenged government departments to be transparent in providing information regarding their work to avoid speculations. Dr. Osi said transparency facilitates a smooth flow of information to the people. Dr. Osi made the remarks after visiting the Department of Immigration and Citizenship Services Headquarters and Malawi Road Traffic Directorate in Blantyre. Details with Macy Zamawa. Vice President Dr. Michael Osi paid a visit to the Department of Immigration Headquarters in Blantyre on Monday with the aim to assess the department's performance, efficiency and service delivery. At the department, Dr. Osi held discussions with senior officials where they discussed various aspects of immigration management, including passport issuance. The vice president said the Department of Immigration is facing several challenges that need to be addressed. He advised the department to make people aware of their dealings regarding the challenges. I was here on behalf of the president. We have looked, we have seen, we have touched, we have observed. We now have to come up with a strategy to deal with those challenges. And another thing that I have highlighted is that even when a patient goes to hospital, when he's given uh, 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 his diagnosis and then prescription, then he's told how he's going to get the medicine. It may not take two days, three days, but when you explain that when you take this medication, you are going to be okay. So you take medication in the morning, in the day, and in the afternoon. The fact that the patient has been given that information, he starts to get better because there's hope that things are going to get better from this prescription that I've seen from the doctor. So what we need as government also is to explain to Malawians very chronologically what we are going to do to deal with the issues that we are facing. Additionally, Dr. Osi called on politicians not to interfere with promotions in government departments and agencies, saying the tendency demotivate workers. Come to issues of promotion or treatment of the people working in the civil service, including the immigration. You should not be informed by political affiliations, whether it be DPP, MCP, UTM, Afodi, uh, whichever party, we are all Malawians. If we politicians contaminate professionalism in the immigration department, then we are going to have so many issues that are going to uh, bite Malawians. After visiting the Department of Immigration, Vice President continued his tour to the Directorate of Road Traffic and Safety Services at General Corner. Addressing people there, Dr. Usi urged workers of government agencies to work hard, efficiently and effectively in serving the people. Well, people have been complaining that they take too long to get uh, services they expect done. So I came here to appreciate, because sometimes we talk a lot out there because we don't know what the, our colleagues are going through here. So I have seen some challenges which as government we have to work. One may argue to say, why have you not done that before? There is time for everything. We are going to look at those problems as a team and see how we're going to uh, reduce those problems. One of them is uh, to do with the, what they call system consultant. And also the issue of queuing. You know, you would appreciate that people would queue on this one they are number one, and then they have to go to another queue. They will be there number 15. So we need to realign so that when somebody queues, by the time he gets out, the services are done. On his part, Chief Roads Traffic Officer for the Directorate, Madalito Gunsaru, said the Vice President's visit is a motivation to the institution. Visit by the Honorable Vice President to our institution 
where we have highlighted the issues. Uh, some, as he had said, are technical issues. Others are to do with customer care and also others bordering on issues of corruption. And uh, there have been recommendations that have been made and he has given us a timeline in which we have to report back to his office. The Vice President, Dr. Michael Wusi, has been to a number of government agencies and departments where he is advocating for efficiency and effectiveness of government organs in serving Malawians better. Mercy Zamawa, MBC News. Some of the people who defected from the opposition Democratic Progressive Party DPP to the Malawi Congress Party say President Dr. Lazla Chakwela needs all the support because he has proven that he is the leader who can take this country forward, citing things like construction of roads and rehabilitation of road transport, among others. The grouping met the core in Lilongwe. We have a report compiled by Maesuchi Kadzula and Patrick Dambula. In recent months, a number of influential politicians have joined the Malawi Congress Party, MCP, after defecting from other parties, largely from the opposition DPP. They include Uladi Musa, Zelia Jagare, and Mariam Chimbalanga. Others who have also joined the MCP recently are Ephraim Nganda Jume from the People's Party and an activist, Redison Munro, as well as Vera Kantukule from the UTM, just to mention some. Some of those who defected from the opposition DPP held a press conference in Lilongwe to tell Malawians the reasons behind their decisions to join the MCP. Redson Munro, who has a background of activism, says one of the factors that motivated him is the style of leadership by President Dr. Lazarus Chakwera and his focus on tackling real issues. He also says the MCP stands out as a beacon of hope because it is a national party, unlike other parties which belong to families. Malawi Congress Party is a national party. All right? Being a national party, there is flexibility of growth in politics in the Malawi Congress Party, other than these other parties that are communicated by family politics. So the type of red son I don't want to be involved in family politics. I don't want to nyambita somebody for me to be given a position in a political party. But you have also witnessed about what these other guys, my, my colleagues, have said about the development that is happening in this country. We don't need to build a billboard. They are there. Our eyes are able to see. So these are all the reasons why that have made me to come and work with Dr. Jaguera's government. More precisely, Malawi Congress Party. Zedia Jagare, who at the time of her defection was vice president for the DPP in the central region, mentions the resumption of rail transport after a 21-year break as one of the major achievements under Dr. Lazarus Chagwira, adding that at the rate development is happening in Malawi, the country is now getting closer to other countries within the region in terms of status, hence her decision to join the MCP. Here in Malawi, we had a serious situation of transportation. Look today, we have railway line, the train is now moving, a sign that everything now is put in order. So such kind of leadership needs people like me, who has interest at the heart for the people, to support such kind of work so that it continues, it spreads, it expands to the needy people in the country. And this made me to get away from DPP and join the Malawi Congress Party. For his part, former Vice President of the DPP in the Central Region, Uladi Musa, said despite all the problems the Jaguar administration has faced, but still the President has delivered, and as such he needs all the support from Malawians for the sake of continuity. Reverend Maiga Muyambeni, who was Director of Operations in the DPP, said he joined the MCP because it is the only party that gives him the platform to save Malawians better. When everything is said and done, all the defectors have agreed that President Dr. Lazarus Chakwera is the only leader who has proven beyond doubt that he can deliver, and therefore he needs to be given all the support by giving him another mandate to run this country in next year's elections. Patrick Dambula, MBC News, Lilongwe.
Meanwhile, political analyst Hafrenz Vula says influential people that are joining the Malawi Congress Party MCP have seen good leadership and policies in the party. Vula has also urged the party's leadership to consider providing counseling to all those contesting in various positions at the forthcoming, forthcoming convention as one way of keeping the party strong ahead of the 2025 elections. Maestro Chikadzula speaks to Mvula. When senior people leave one party and they join another one, it means that they're going or oh, they're adding value to the new party or they have found something attractive in the new party. So this is a straightforward demonstration that people are comfortable to join um, MCB. And it means that they're able to see that MCB, possibly the leadership is straightforward, welcoming, and possibly they're also happy with the policies that the MCP is pursuing for the moment. Okay, uh, looking at the forthcoming convention uh, scheduled for 8th to 10th uh, August, this is for the Malawi Congress Party, this is in our. Uh, a lot has been said mainly on the endorsement of the uh, party president, Dr. Sakwela. What, uh, as a political analyst, what's your take on this development? There is nothing wrong in uh, party followers, ministers, individuals endorsing uh, party president, Dr. Sakwela. It means that they have got faith in him. They have trust in him. This is a cooperation between uh, members of the same party. What can be your advice? You're correct. Your question is correct. Uh, this is a difficult convention. You look at the, the contestation. It's very, uh, yeah, I mean, it's very critical. It's very high, and people are really campaigning very hard. These are high-profile individuals in the party. If it is not managed properly, uh, it can break the party. Uh, it can break the party because individuals may have invested a lot of resources into a position, one position. For example, the position of vice president. People have gone up and down trying to campaign for the position of vice president. But there can only be two vice presidents. Now, stakeholders in the energy sector have anonymously agreed to utilize the newly assented Electricity Amendment Act to combat vandalism of the Electricity Supply Corporation of Malawi ESCOM infrastructure. The consensus was reached during the inaugural stakeholders engagement meeting on the Electricity Amendment Act in Blantyre, which brought together representatives from the judiciary, police and scrap metal users. Blessing Stilwoka with the details. The meeting is part of a series of sensitization and advocacy sessions to be heard in all the regions of the country. Chief Executive Officer for ESCOM, Kankwamba Kumwenda, urged the judiciary to impose stiffer sentences as stipulated in the new act. From the judiciary, what we're expecting is that because having a law is one thing, but implementing is another one. Like if you notice, the penalties now are very harsh. For an illegal connection, it's 100 million or and 20 years imprisonment. For being in possession, let me, let me just warn the scrap dealers. Now we have added the, a charge for being in possession of ESCOM property, storing, purportedly storing, it's uh, uh, 30 years and 150 million. And again, for ex employees and employees who are adding these fundraising exercises, receiving a harsher punishment, 150 million and 30 years in prison. We believe that now that we've engaged the judiciary, the police, and the, including the staff middle dealers, the penalties that will be melted will be in line with the device or amended Act 2024. Commissioner of Police for South West Division, Noel Kaira, agrees with ESCOM CEO, emphasizing that some existing sentences demotivate police officers. As law enforcement, we remain deeply concerned with uh, the punishment or the, uh, the punishment that are meted by the courts. The, penalty, the penalties from the law are quite good, but when you look at the discretionary power of giving out sentences, that's where we have a challenge. And you recall I gave an example of, of uh, the Forest Act, Chill Forest is being depleted, where people have been arrested, the sentences are 20,000, 30,000. So similarly, we have a good law here with good sentences. But now the onus is on the judiciary after the prosecution has proved their case. The judiciary must equally assist by meting out penalties that are stiffer to data 
uh, those that uh, would like to continue vandalizing ESCOM infrastructure. Chief Justice Rezin Zikamanda praised the new act as a significant step towards curbing vandalism, noting that previous provisions were limiting in giving stiffer penalties. This is uh, an important development in our laws that uh, we now have a new law which talks about uh, enhanced sentences uh, in trying to curb uh, vandalism and theft of electricity in the country. As you know, that this has been a major problem uh, for some time now. And so the coming in of this new law and the coming in of this exercise of stakeholder consultation is going to help us move forward in order to curb uh, this uh, vandalism and theft of electricity. We want to curb uh, vandalism, we want to curb criminality, and uh, it will be met with swift sentences. The Electricity Amendment Bill was signed into law by President Dr. Lazarus Chakwera after its passage in Parliament. Blessings, Chereuka, MBC, Blantyre. You're watching MBC News with me, Kingsley Mdila, and my sign language interpreter is Linley Mponda. Remember, you can access all MBC digital platforms by scanning the QR code at the top right corner on your TV screen. A reminder of our top stories. Vice President Dr. Michael Osi has challenged government departments to be transparent to avoid speculations. Defectors from the opposition DPP pledge their support to President Dr. Lars Lasekwela. And government launches a 1 billion kwacha NGO fund with a call for non-government organizations to use the funds for its intended purpose. Soko mahatu kumaranatha, sisi kutileki. Titatsegura, maranatha, Capital Girls Academy. Makoro muna angula, tinamfa. Muna di mkufuna suku ya pa mwanda u Capitolo. Nyanya mata, nyeda zanayo tsopano. Maranatha, Capital Boys Academy. Maro wake, ndi abu ina kwa mpiri. 50 kilometers, ujoka ya kunilongwe. Pampone na peni peni pa chapatani mbode mbode motel. Chakuja ande ni hotel standard. Kukamba sama punziro. Mkutuwa kare inu yosili mapenge tai. Funsa, funsa. in malawi where the rhythm of life beats strong there's a name that's been a beacon of trust for seven decades that name is old mutual for seven decades we have stood beside you weathering storms and celebrating triumphs since the opening of our first branch in 1954 we continue to help malawians achieve their lifetime goals and dreams 70 years of doing great things with old mutual Welcome to St. Peter's Private Schools in Imponela, where we prepare our students for the future with excellence, diversity, and innovation. St. Peter's Private Schools in Imponela offers a wide range of academic programs that cater for the interests and abilities of our students. Our teachers are qualified, experienced, and dedicated to helping learners achieve their goals. We have three schools under St. Peter's Private Schools. We have a primary school, boys' secondary school and the girls' secondary school at your disposal. Science and technology are crucial in today's world. We have audio, visual learning facilities, state-of-the-art lab lottery, and a modern and well-equipped library. At St. Peter's Private Schools in Imponera, we also celebrate our diversity and our culture. We also prepare our students for the next stage of their lives. So what are you waiting for? Join us at St. Peter's Private Schools in Imponela today and discover your potential. St. Peter's Private Schools in Imponela.
Welcome back. You're watching the latest edition of NBC News live from our Kwacha studios in Blantyre. Now, communities living near protected wildlife areas across Malawi have been advised to desist from poaching and attacking game rangers. Minister of Tourism Vera Kamtukule made the remarks during the joint commemoration of World Wetlands, Wildlife and Rangers Day in Rumpi. Hassan Piri reports. Activities to mark the day started with a parade covering a distance of over 500 meters around Rumpi Boma. Minister of Tourism Vera Kantukure said the event highlights the importance of collaboration and knowledge sharing in conservation efforts and enhance interconnectedness of wetlands, wildlife and rangers. She then expressed concern over the attitude of some community members that attack and injure game rangers. She said game rangers play a critical role in ensuring that wildlife is protected and that human-animal conflicts are reduced. I can never overemphasize the role that our rangers play. Every single day they are hunted down as animals. It is, it is, you should see, you saw one of the, the rangers, he was, he was injured. He was injured by an animal, but most times they are also injured by human beings, poachers. And it's, it's, it's very heartbreaking. I went to Mijiru um, Nature Sanctuary the other day, and a woman, a wife of a ranger, was telling me that, am I, they burnt down our house while I was in the house with the kids. Can you imagine? And I'm a woman, and I'm a married woman as well. I cannot imagine somebody coming into our house because of the job of my husband. So what I'm saying to you is they have given up their lives, sacrificing themselves so that we could have wildlife, so that we could have a tourism sector in this country. And so we need to celebrate them, but at the same time, we need to ensure that we are promoting the job that they do and sensitizing the communities in terms of what they do and how they can partner together. Country manager for African Park Sam Kamoto described the tendency of fighting rangers by some community members as unfortunate. It's high time the country started appreciating the sacrifices that rangers make to conserve wildlife. Well, I think we get to at least two or three incidences in a year. Um, people have started also have also started to resolve to mobbing. Yeah, so when they gang up, go into a protected area and confront the rangers. So that's a worrisome development and um, we would like to try as much as possible to request members of the communities, particularly those that are living next to the protected areas, that they should give us a lot of support. They need to understand that we are protecting these natural resources, wildlife. During the event, the minister also awarded few individuals that lost their lives in the line of duty, some that got injured by poachers and wild animals, and also other hardworking and dedication rangers were equally decorated and went home with token of appreciation. Hassan Piri, MBC News, Room P. Now, government has launched a 1 billion kwacha NGO fund with a call for non-government organizations, NGOs, to use the funds for its intended purpose. Launching the fund in Blantyre, Minister of Gender, Jean Sendeza, says there is need for both local and international NGOs to work in collaboration for the government to help in alleviating challenges communities face. Details in this report. The 2023 NGO sector report indicated that at least 20 NGOs close their operation annually, with at least 100 reported dormant due to financial constraints. It is for this reason that during the 2023 NGO Day commemoration, President Dr. Lazarus Chakwira directed the Ministry of Gender and Non-Governmental Organization Regulatory Authority, Ngora, to come up with a comprehensive capacity building program to make the NGO sector vibrant. According to the Minister of Gender, launching the fund will enable local NGOs have impact in communities they operate in and help the country achieve the Malawi 2063 agenda. What I'd want to appeal to all those that will be benefiting from this fund is to make good use of these uh, funds. The funds should be made uh, uh, use to the programs that are for the communities. And what I would want also to make mention here is to thank you know, the uh, president, Dr. Lazarus Makathe Chakwera, in pro for providing uh, these uh, uh, monies into the budget. One billion Malawi kwacha is not in a mean achievement, and would want to see that the, whatever would want to do on the ground 
will be you know, uh, in tandem with the wishes of the president. Chief Executive Officer for Ngora, Edward Chireka Banda, hinted that introduction of a 1 billion kwacha NGO fund will enhance skills development and community empowerment programs among local NGOs. As Ngora, it's a big day and we are grateful to government for providing the 1 billion uh, uh, startup fund uh, to the NGOs. So we expect uh, from today that NGOs will apply for this fund and be able to address some of their internal problems that uh, have affected their operations. What we want is that the NGOs as a key uh, development partner should be able to, uh, uh, to improve their services, support the government, and be able to support very remote, uh, uh, remote areas that are sometimes not well serviced. A representative of Blantyre Urban Civil Society Network Organizations, Menad Nyerenda, hailed President Jaguira's demonstration for walking the talk. We thank government for, for this fund. Uh, it's the first of its kind to have an NGO fund. And the, this fund is going towards the right um, areas, which is enhancing capacity uh, of uh, uh, government organizations. Not only enhancing their capacity, but also enhancing coordination, enhancing partnership, and also how we work with the local councils. So we are very excited. Uh, we can't wait for the activities to start. Meanwhile, Ngora has registered 1,045 NGOs, and there are around 150 active non-registered NGOs expected to enroll. Government is condemning acts of misinformation by some politicians with an aim of planting seed of hurt amongst the seasonally in the country. The statement by Minister of Information and Digitalization Moses Kunkuyu follows recent political statements by UTM Secretary General Patricia Kaliati, who claimed that more 2 million people from Lilongwe have been employed by the government. Speaking at an inaugural Tambala Super Cup in Blantyre, Kunkuyu encouraged people to always refrain from being taken away by some statements pronounced on political podiums, as this has the potential to divide the people on tribal and regional lines, he explains. I was relating it to the art of football. What has changed? How has football evolved? From the way football used to be played to how the football is being played now, what you can see is that they have uh, injected a great dose of thinking, critical thinking in the way football is being played, administration of football, even the way uh, football managers do manage the game. If we can borrow that, we are not going to waste our time criticizing leaders or not wasting our time on TikTok, Facebook and not using it productively. That is something that is missing because we have now access to the internet, but how we are using it, we are not putting it to some productive use. In the end, you find even politicians, they are now looking at the minds of the people as very gullible minds where they can tell them anything knowing that they're going to believe it. How does someone stand on the podium and say the government has, a, has employed 2.1 million people from a city that does not have a population of 2 million people? This is someone playing with the people's minds because he or she believes that the people are going to believe in that. So there are ways of people getting political mileage than just standing on the podium and lying to people. Well, that item wraps up this edition of NBC News, a reminder of our top stories. Vice President Dr. Michael Osi has challenged government departments to be transparent to avoid speculations. Defectors from the opposition DPP pledge their support to President Dr. Lazarus Chakwela. And government launches a 1 billion kwacha NGO fund with a call for non-government organizations to use the funds for its intended purpose. Well, for more on these and other stories, follow our online platforms, Facebook, X, and our website, 
nbc.mw. You can also access all NBC digital platforms by scanning the QR code at the top right corner of your TV screen. On behalf of the News and Current Affairs Department, my name is Kings Lemtila and Lin Lemponda as our sign language interpreter tonight. Thanks for watching and bye for now. Hello, I...